you are welcome to post 307 contemporary political analysis my name is dr lubenga p fasheluka contemporary political analysis as a cause presupposes that there had been political analysis the prefix contemporary is suggesting to us that there are must be new methods, must be new ways of analyzing political phenomena. Uh, this is what we are supposed to look at in this program. The general overview of this lecture, this course offers an insight to the meanings and nature of contemporary political analysis. It emphasizes the use of scientific method in political analysis. It examines behavioralism, institutionalism, and political culture approaches in political analysis, leveraging on theories of dependency, modernization, and political economy. The course further examines the dissimilarities between political philosophy and political science, and between political science and natural sciences. It highlights the approaches for analyzing political events in the realms of domestic and international politics. The primary aim, after this course, students are expected to understand the primary aim of providing a comprehensive knowledge of contemporary political analysis. Specific objectives which you will come out with after this course include one to unfold the concept of political analysis number two is to present an overview of approaches in contemporary political analysis then you should be able to distinguish between philosophy and political science and between political science and the natural sciences and apply different approaches in political science to a wide and diverse area of politics at domestic and international level the grading style, yeah, attendance is 10%, charge and participation 10, assignment 10, final exam 70, total max 100%. There are class rules in this class. Absence will uh, attract loss of marks for attendance. Late submission of assignment, you will forfeit total marks obtainable. Unruly behavior and uh, charts during class interaction, penalty of loss of total marks obtainable. Submission of assignments shall be online through email, except as otherwise instructed. Academic dishonesty in this course includes all class work and individual homework should be done independently unless otherwise expressly instructed. General solution strategies may be discussed but individual solutions must be written independently. Our study session one is to look at introduction to contemporary political analysis. Now, let us start with what is political analysis. Let us conceptualize. In our everyday life, questions are, answered, are asked. When these questions are asked, answers are provided. When you provide answers, you then you have to rationalize. You have to justify. Why do you think it is this your answer that is provided that is the solution to the question that has arisen? So there's a need for control, for rationalization, for justification. So question must be asked, answers provided, then there must be control, which is justification of rationalization. This is the very basis of uh, what we are going to be looking at in this, uh, in this course. You g give an answer, you give reasons for the answer. In political science, political analysis involves inquiries that can be scientific, normative, descriptive, and analytical. Contemporary political analysis refers to new methods and approaches in political science that seek to explain the occurrence of certain political events, the why, the where, the how, and the when. 
how such events can be controlled. Ramifications of contemporary political science, uh, political analysis, according to Sagay, 1988. It involves to know what is important in politics, that is, those things that influence or determine the outcome of events. Number two, to know what is valuable, the difference every political outcome makes to our individual or collective desires. Number three, to know what is real or true by systematically subjecting our guesses, our impressions, popular beliefs, even rumors, to verification. As students of political science, virtually everything that happens around us today have political implication or political meaning. You must be above board in giving your answers to political questions must be, involved, must be informed, must be informed. This is what we are supposed to learn in this uh, course. Types of political analysis. Number one is normative analysis. These are types of political analysis that ask questions of value. What is good? Something that is about value judgment. For instance, we agree that democracy is a very good form of government because at least it gives you a right, an opportunity to decide who governs you. We also agree that concepts like rule of law, fundamental rights are good. So these are no, they are value judgments about what is good. Uh, the founding fathers of this plateau, Thomas Hobbes, John Rawls, ETC, they wrote about good life. Another type of political analysis is the empirical. It seeks to identify observable phenomenon in the real world as against what ought to be. Empirical seeks to describe what is, what is actually happening. It doesn't have to be good. What is the real life situation? So, empirical analysis burrows into it. It wants to find out through empiricism, through scientific discovery, what led to the phenomena that is being looked at. Empiricism is the basis of the natural sciences and the inclination of positivist, positivist political thinkers. It employs comparative methods across different political systems or historical antecedents. It predicts and offers explanation. It aims towards universality. Types of political analysis. It could be semantic, that is conceptual analysis and clarification. There is no commonly accepted concept in politics, what Gali called essentially contested concepts. You will come across so many concepts in uh, political science. There is has never been one that has been able to enjoy a commonly agreed definition. There are perspectives. So, then, definition of concept is crucial. Because of this, you have to define your concepts in political analysis. Again, Osage, 1988, says conceptualization according to authority or standard English dictionaries. Then it could be nominal. That is dictionary definition and uh, operational, which are based on ideological considerations. That is objective. Types of political analysis. What is contemporary political analysis? Blondel identifies the development of contemporary political analysis as the three main battlefields, each dominating political analysis. What are these three main battlefields? One is normative versus distinctive. That is the difference between what ought to be and what is. The other is law and reality. The strict provision of legalism. What the law stipulates. The prescription of structures versus what actually are the behavioral uh, discoveries. Why human beings act in certain ways in organizations. Then the third Battlefield is the unique versus the general, a quantification of political analysis and development of behavioralism between political studies and political science, which is referred to as contemporary political analysis. Types of political analysis. 
Contemporary political analysis can be defined as new process, approaches, and strategies that guide the political scientists in studying political phenomena. It requires new tools, methods, and concepts in dissecting the why, the when, the where, and how of political phenomenon and prediction of control. Analysis could mean different things to different people. To a chemist, it could mean breaking matter into its constitutive parts. To so the biologist, it could mean sorting things into categories. To a mathematician, deriving conclusions from premises. To us in the social scientists, it could mean analyzing cause and effect. Thus, to analyze means to ask questions, give an answer, and then give reasons for the answer. Analysis has proletaria of meaning, just like any concept in the social sciences. Describing a political system or a general political phenomenon and explaining or accounting for such facts are scientific activities. Traditional political philosophers of Aristotle describing and comparing various types of uh, constitution, that is what political analysis means to the Aristotelian school. To Machiavelli, it is struggle for power like he encapsulated in his book, The Prince. It could be criticism of traditional philosophers for lacking the scientific and methodological foundation and mathematical or statistical tools of analysis. Theoretical approaches in political analysis. An approach provides a guide in selecting facts and organizing them in a meaningful way, implicitly or explicitly. It determines the questions, perspectives, and procedures or methods of research. Approaches in political science are dynamic and multidisciplinary. There is no universally accepted approach. There is no right, there is no wrong in political analysis. Analytical and comparative and should avoid causal observation. You don't just jump into conclusion. There must be a control, like we said, there must be rationalization, there must be justification. When you are providing an answer to a question in, of a political phenomenon, it's not a perfunctory thing. It is a thing that must be informed by rational thinking, by uh, empiricism. Science or policies should not be seen as a set of methods with a predetermined theory, but rather as a commitment to explore and attempt to understand a given segment of empirical reality. In the social sciences, there are variables, there are periods. Variables of a particular period might be different from variables of another period. So the answer is not fixed, it's not cast in iron. It is dynamic. It changes with time. Tools for contemporary political analysis. Then there are approaches in contemporary political analysis. The first approach is general strat strategy for studying political phenomena. Development of strategies for directing research activities provides underlying assumptions and organizing concepts uh, slash set of concepts that orients or orients research, and coordinate empirical data from several sources. Models in contemporary political analysis. A theoretical construct that represents political processes by a set of variables and a set of logical slash quantitative relationships between them. Like I said, they are not constant. They change over time. Simplified frameworks designed to illustrate complex processes often but not always using mathematical techniques. Abstraction of real life systems used to facilitate understanding and to aid in decision making. Paradigms in contemporary political analysis. They refer to the set of practices that define a scientific discipline at any particular period. Paradigms are not also constant. They keep changing because the variables keep changing and the outcome must, of course, keep changing too. So you talk about paradigm shift. What is to be observed, scrutinized? Kind of questions to be asked? How these questions are to be asked? How these questions are to be structured? How results of scientific investigation should be interpreted? 
The Oxford English Dictionary defines paradigm as a pattern or model, an exemplar. How is an experiment to be conducted? And what equipment is available to conduct the experiment? Conceptual frameworks. They are also known as theoretical frameworks. They are type of intermediate theory that attempt to connect to all aspects of inquiry. Example is definition of problem, the purpose, literature review, methodology, data collection, and analysis. Conceptual frameworks act like maps that give credence to empirical inquiry. They take different forms depending upon the research question or problem. Consensus and conflict perspective in contemporary political research. Politics as a cooperative act, as against politics as competitive act. Different interpretation to the same political phenomenon, e.g., poor turnout of voters. A political analyst may explain poor turnout of voters, for instance, from the angle that the government that is in power is doing very well. And that people did not turn out to vote because they are contented with the government that is there. Another analyst may look at it, the same phenomena differently. That the poor turnout of voter or apathy is as a result of loss of confidence in the electoral system, for instance. The same phenomena, different perspective. Cultural, rational, and calculus institutional approach. Consensus and conflict perspectives. Decision between assumption that human behavior is the result of unconscious motivations or subjective beliefs. And analysis, will, so, will, so an analyst will argue that human beings behave or their behavior are perfunctory that they, they, they are instinctive. It doesn't, uh, it is not subject to something that could be explained. Another perspective, we say human behavior is rational. That outcomes are involved, informed by objective considerations of one variable or the other. Cultural, structural, and institutional approaches Structuralists, e.g., Marxism, dependency theorists, and Weberians stressed broad micro level conditions in the state, the economy, and society. Micro versus macro approaches. The level of analysis that researchers select as starting point for the study of policies. Level of analysis means grouping theories together based on the type of assumptions made about the most important actors. Always abstract. That is, we have to look for explanation of state behavior. Other focusing upon the parts or the whole, upon the component or upon the system. Political science research occurs at different levels, ranging from the individual micro to groups, macro, or to the uh, increasing size, the entire gamut. It could be the nation state itself. Selection of appropriate unit and level of analysis is very, very critical. You must select unit or, or level of analysis that is manageable. Avoid universality of cases. A sample of cases must be identified. Maximize variance, minimize bias. Micro, like we said, individual, medium, political units, and macro, the entire political system. Quanti qualitative and quantitative approaches. Quantitative approaches uses number and statistical methods. They are based on numerical measurements. They are also known as large N research. It's abstract from particular to the general. They test causal hypothesis. They measure and analyze phenomena and events that are easily replicable by other researchers. Qualitative, don't rely on numerical measurements. Focus on small number of cases, uses intensive interviews. They are normative, they are historical, they are philosophical and descriptive. Qualitative approaches are more flexible and quantitative, e.g. questionnaires. Uh, again, in summary, the essence of contemporary political analysis says if political phenomenon are the reason, there must be reason why 
it has a reason, then those reasons must be justifiable. They must be rationalized. There must be basis, objective criteria, which are scientific, which are empirical, which are verifiable. I thank you for listening.